The universe is unthinkably big. You can fit 900,000 Earths in the sun, 278.8 billion suns in our solar system, 100 billion solar systems in our galaxy, 100,000 galaxies in our galaxy supercluster, with 10 million superclusters in the observable universe. Now the crazy thing is, even with all of this, the universe is still mostly empty, yet it can somehow fit all of these things. Now the even crazier thing is that I'm still Silver 1 in CSGO after 900 hours. I don't get what I'm doing wrong. Somebody please help. Anyways, roll in. Written by user Sign of Struggle on Reddit, it outlines a variety of marvelous places, objects, and theories about the universe. You already know how these charts work. The lower you get, the more obscure and niche it gets. For example, if I were to do an iceberg chart on myself, the tip of it would be that I'm blonde, the second level would be that I'm six foot, and third level would be that I'm left-handed and really bad at CSGO. Now I got some CSGO surf in the background for your enjoyment. Okay, you get it, let's go. The sun is vital to all life on earth. It heats the earth to a suitable temperature and more importantly without the sun this video wouldn't exist. I'm at 7-Eleven getting gas, right? Let me insert my card, release card, one moment, bonus ticket. The sun isn't just another planet though, it's actually a star, a yellow dwarf to be exact. Dwarf planets are a type of planet that looks like a planet but does not meet the certain criteria to become one. The most famous of these dwarf planets is Pluto, which used to be the ninth planet in our solar system, but it got its planet card revoked because it has not cleared its neighboring region of other objects. Basically, Pluto does not have enough scientific street cred to be a planet. Halley's Comet was discovered by Edmund Halley in 1758 and is probably one of the most famous comets on the planet. Well, it's not, you know what I mean. Haley makes a flyby of Earth around every 75 years and was famously around for the birth of author Mark Twain as well as his death. Mark Twain famously said, I came in with Haley's Comet in 1835. It is coming again next year and I expect to go out with it. It will be the greatest disappointment of my life if I don't go out with Haley's Comet. Black holes are a region of space where gravity pulls so strong that not even light can escape the black hole. They are formed when a lot of matter is squeezed into a very tiny place. This typically happens when a big star dies. Supermassive black holes can be found at the center of most of the larger galaxies, including our very own Milky Way. We actually have a picture of the black hole in the center of our galaxy. Here's the picture. As I mentioned earlier, the sun is a star and stars do die. Stars start to die once they have burned through most of their hydrogen in their core. When it dies, it will start to expand and expand. In the sun's case, it will expand and eat the earth. This means they will be in its red giant phase, which it will stand for about a billion years. After the hydrogen in the outer core runs out, it will shrink into a white dwarf, then into a planetary nebula. So technically it won't explode, but it sounds cooler, so I'm gonna go with that. Also, this won't happen for at least five billion years, so unless you plan on pulling a Lorenzo cat habit, I wouldn't worry. Mars is the fourth planet from the sun and currently looks like this. It didn't always look like this though, it's theorized that Mars once had huge oceans that kind of looked like this. Currently, most of the water on Mars exists in the form of ice. We have measured more than 5 million cubic kilometers at or near the surface of Mars, which is enough to cover the whole planet in the depth of around 35 meters or 115 feet. The space race was a competition between the US and the former Soviet Union to develop aerospace capabilities including satellites, unmanned space probes, and human spaceflight. During the Cold War, a few notable things happened, such as the first human in space, Russian cosmonaut Yuri Gagarin, then the United States ultimately won the space race by sending Neil Armstrong, Buzz Aldrin, and Michael Collins to the moon. Although planets are much, much smaller than the stars in the sky, they are actually closer, which means that during optimal stargazing conditions, you are actually able to see Mercury, Venus, Mars, Jupiter, and Saturn with your naked eye. There are plenty of apps on your phone that can help you spot these, including one called Night Sky, which I use. Now, I'm assuming that he meant binary systems because I couldn't find much info on bi-star systems, but a binary system is a solar system with two stars instead of one. The most famous example of this is from Star Wars. When you look at the scene with Tatooine in it and Luke Skywalker, you can see two stars instead of one. 
exoplanets are the planets that are found outside of our solar system up until 1992 we didn't know if they actually existed we were like 99.9% .9 sure that they did but we didn't discover one until 1992. A notable exoplanet you have probably heard of is Kepler 22b which has been called the super earth or earth 2.0 because it lies in the habitable zone of its star. Realistically the star is probably too big to be habitable. Venus, the second planet from the sun, is going backwards, like it's spinning backwards compared to most planets. This means that on Venus, the sun rises in the west and sets in the east. Unrelated fact about Venus, it spins really, really slow. One full spin takes over half an Earth year at 243 Earth days. So most people know that Saturn has rings, it's kind of Saturn's one personality trait, but Jupiter, Uranus, and Neptune also have rings. They are just much smaller, this means that all the gas giants in our solar system have rings, which is pretty cool. Andromeda Galaxy is the closest galaxy to us here on Earth. The formal name for Andromeda is Messier 31, and it is a spiral-shaped galaxy around 2.5 million light-years away from Earth. This means that if someone from Andromeda was to look through a telescope at Earth, they would see the queen in her teenage years. Uranus is probably the most popular planet for all 2 to 9 year olds and roughly 84% of the male population. It is the seventh planet from the sun and is known for the obvious and the fact that it is likely that diamonds rain on or in Uranus. Jupiter is the biggest planet in our solar system and is known for its massive size and a big red spot. Most people know about this spot, but not many people know that this spot is actually a massive storm that produces wind speeds up to 432 kilometers an hour or 268 miles per hour. To show you how big this storm is, let's look at Earth inside of the storm. It is 1.3 times as wide as Earth. It, what the, the what? This entry likely refers to the fact that if you were to fold an A4 piece of paper 103 times, it would be thicker than the entire observable universe. Now I know that sounds crazy, but think about it like this. Every time you fold a sheet of paper in half, it doubles. We sadly will not be able to do this anytime soon because the current record is 12. This entry is referring to how Uranus is rotating nearly 90 degrees from its plane of orbit. This makes the planet look like it's rolling around the sun, which is pretty cool, I guess. Nibiru, also known as the non-existent planet, or Planet X, was a planet that was supposed to crash into Earth during 2012 to cause the end of the world like the Mayan calendar predicted. Seeing as how it's now 2022, almost a decade since that was supposed to happen, I think it is safe to assume that Nibiru wasn't a real threat. <laughs> Mini galaxies, also known as dwarf galaxies, or as you can probably guess, small galaxies. These galaxies are relatively small, but still pretty big. They contain a few hundred thousand stars, while regular galaxies contain million or even billions of stars. During tests involving space and space exploration, we used animals in the place of humans to test the survivability of space and stuff like that. These animals varied from cats to dogs to monkeys to even jellyfish. One of the most famous animals in space was probably a Russian dog named Laika. Laika was sent to space aboard Sputnik 2, the world's second artificial satellite. She was in space for around four orbits until she passed away from overheating. Sadly, pretty much all of these animals ended up dying in space. The Great Attractor is a gravitational anomaly that could be the central gravitational point of the Laniakea supercluster the galaxy supercluster the Milky Way is in. As you may have guessed, it's called the Great Attractor because it attracts a lot of things towards it. Like, a lot. Like, millions and millions and millions of stars towards it. Scientists have proposed a few theories as to what the Great Attractor could be, such as it could be a confluence of dark energy or be caused by overdensity, which is an area of superdense mass that is caused by insane gravitational pull. However, we do know that it isn't a giant black hole, which is really disappointing to be honest, I really wanted that to be the case. This entry likely refers to star systems that contain three separate stars, very similar to the previously mentioned binary system which contains two stars except this version has three stars. The most famous tri-star system is likely the Alpha Centauri system which contains Alpha Centauri A, Alpha Centauri B, and Proxima Centauri. 
This entry likely refers to how some of the white noise we hear on radios is caused by Jupiter. This happens because electrons shooting into Jupiter's magnetic field causes noise. White noise is what we hear on the radios. This phenomenon is called dicometer radio waves, which have a frequency between 10 and 40 megahertz. This entry likely refers to how some astronomers believe that one of the reasons Earth is habitable is because Jupiter helps protect us from getting smacked by some comets and stuff. The planet with the big red zit is said to deflect the comets by using its huge gravitational pull to slingshot the big scary space rocks from the big blue marble. The coldest place in the universe is said to be the Boomerang Nebula. This pretty cool collection of space dust and gases is located around 5,000 light years away from Earth and is sitting at a chilly negative 459 degrees Fahrenheit and negative 270 degrees Celsius. This cold spot is caused by a dying star in the center of the nebula shedding its outer layers, which is normal. What isn't normal is the fact that it's doing this at a crazy 10 billion times faster than our sun. Since the gases are being thrown away from the nebula so fast, it is basically shooting all of the heat energy causing the nebula to cool to the temperature it is at. Now obviously Earth doesn't have rings right now, but in the past it might have had some very small rings. These rings would have been caused by an asteroid or comet being torn apart by the Earth's gravity. Another thing this entry could be referencing is Project West Ford. West Ford was an experiment that launched 480 million small copper antennas which made an artificial ring around the planet. Now this ring was not visible because, well, these are the antennas next to a stamp. They are very small. The purpose of this experiment was to create a network of antennas to allow for communication. These needles sadly are no longer functional and do not need to be because we have satellites and stuff. White holes, as you may have guessed, are like the opposite of black holes. In a black hole, nothing can escape and it swallows everything in its path. White holes do the opposite. Nothing can enter and it spits stuff out. Now, white holes are purely theoretical and cannot exist according to the second law of thermodynamics. Still pretty cool though. I plan on making more in-depth video about them later. Titan is Saturn's largest moon and is home to the Big Purple Man. Titan's lakes aren't like ours, they are filled with a liquid, but instead of it being water, it's liquid ethane and methane. Here are some pictures of the lakes and seas. The big ones are known as Maria and the small ones are known as Lacus, which means lakes. Some measurements have recorded the depth of these lakes as deep as a thousand feet. God, I love space. This entry is likely referring to how some people believe that God and the universe are the same thing. Some people believe that after God created the universe, he decided to better control it or something. I don't know why I'm not God, but this belief is called pantheism, and it's actually pretty interesting if you look it up. This entry is referring to how there are tiny little Lego pieces on board the Juno spacecraft that is orbiting Jupiter. It carries three little tiny passengers, a minifigure of the Roman god, Jupiter, his wife, and the famous astronomer Galileo Galilei. It makes me happy Legos have been in space, but I would love it if they sent these little guys up. They just deserve it. They've been through so much. Now, it's pretty common knowledge that gas giants are made of gas and you can't, like, live on one. Well, comfortably. But did you know that gas giants have rocky or metallic cores and these giant gassy planets may need these cores to form in the first place? Another cool thing about gas giants is that Jupiter has 64 moons. So I couldn't find much on the inverse Big Bang, but I am going to assume that they meant the Big Crunch, which is a hypothetical scenario on how the world ends. In this ultimate doomsday scenario, the expansion of the universe gets so big that it ends up reversing the expansion until the universe eventually recollapses. So it's basically like someone putting on a video of the Big Bang, but it got rewinded. <laughs> Previously mentioned Andromeda Galaxy is making another comeback with this entry. This entry refers to how in about 5 billion years, the Milky Way Galaxy and Andromeda Galaxy will collide to create Milk Dromeda. Not that we have to worry because, you know, we'll be dead, but even on the off chance you live to be 5 billion years old, you don't have to worry because this collision will basically take place in slow motion and most of the galaxies are spread out in between space. So the only way the Earth would be destroyed is if by the off chance we get stiffed armed by like a gas giant or something. 
Now, I'm not really sure what this entry is referring to, but it might be the fact that the moon is geologically active, which means there's like earthquakes, or moonquakes, I guess. I was really hoping that there would be a theory about how the moon is living, because it sounds super interesting, but I couldn't find anything. Let me know in the comments if there is, I'm super curious. This entry is likely referring to the theory that the reason we have not met any aliens yet is because the Earth is too young. The universe is still in its infancy and there might not have been enough time for other intelligent life to evolve to have spaceflight and other capabilities like off-world communication. Not a lot of people realize that we are in the beginning of the universe. Like 14 billion years old is a lot, but compared to what the universe could grow to be, we're basically fresh out of the womb, like a foot is still stuck inside. This entry is referring to the theory that the entire universe is just inside of a black hole. It's a pretty common belief that the universe started from an infinitely dense and hot point called a singularity. Singularities are also in black holes, so the theory states that there could be an entire universe inside of every black hole. This entry refers to the possibility that our moon may have been a gift from Venus. Now obviously there isn't an annual planetary white elephant gift exchange. By gift I mean that the Earth's gravity captured the moon, which was once Venus's moon. This is kind of rude on the Earth's end, because Venus currently does not have a moon. It's also unlikely that Venus ever did have a moon because of its proximity to the sun. CMB stands for Cosmic Microwave Background, which is the light left over from the primordial universe. There are some cool theories about CMB, like how it could be possible that this is evidence of another universe leaking into ours. Like I said, this is just a theory. This entry probably refers to how our universe could just be a simulation, but specifically a simulation ran from a giant computer. A computer the size of stars is called an M-Brain, I'm just gonna call it an M-Brain because I can and it's my channel. The M-Brain is a hypothetical megastructure that would be powered by a Dyson Sphere which is like a bubble around a star that absorbs the energy. The M-Brain would have an insane amount of computation power because you know it's the size of a star. Some people believe that our universe is just a simulation being ran on an M-Brain. The last entry on the list is probably the scariest. This entry refers to the theory that we are actually alone. Like out of all the planets, solar systems, and galaxies, Earth is the only one that has life. Like humans are it, there is nothing else, just us. We could venture for billions of years in every direction and find nothing. The thought of not sharing the universe with anyone and it just being us scares me and it should scare you. Earth is such a small part of the universe that even if I were to say the percentage of the universe that the Earth makes up, I couldn't possibly do it in my life time because there are just that many zeros. Like just in our solar system, the Earth only takes up 0.003% of space and that is just one of the millions of solar systems in our galaxy and our galaxy is just one of the 36 galaxies in our local group and only one of the 47,000 in our galaxy supercluster and only one of the 130 billion galaxies in our observable universe and that's just our observable universe. So yes, it is insanely scary to think that we're the only ones to inhabit the entire universe. Thank you for watching. If you want, you can like it and you can subscribe for the science or because of my overwhelming sex appeal. Anyways, this video took a really long time to make and if you want to leave any constructive criticism in the comments, I would really appreciate it. I will try to get the next video out as quickly as possible, but I don't have the best track record, so uh, expect one in about six to nine months. All right, um, toodles.